New discoveries carry information that contradicts even the most recent theories. You have never seen anything like this. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Burial of the Bronze Age under the castle Austrian archaeologists have carried out excavations on the territory of the Grass Castle and have discovered artifacts from the Copper Age to the Middle Ages. Among the finds were a crescent-shaped earring, a fragment of a bronze bracelet and ceramics. At one of the excavations, archaeologists discovered a burial of the Ernepal culture, one of the oldest examples of the cremation of the dead in Syria. Restoration work in the Grass Castle sometimes brings interesting archaeological finds, so in 2010, scientists discovered an unusual early medieval burial. In total, the researchers found the skeletons of nine or ten men stacked on top of each other. It is possible that suicides, unbaptized children or victims of execution were buried in this way. During excavations, archaeologists discovered finds from different eras. Archaeologists noted that to their surprise, despite the numerous medieval and modern construction work in the castle area, the cultural layer of the prehistoric era was well preserved. So, in some areas, its capacity reached one meter. Among the finds were fragments of ceramics, part of bronze bracelet, which belonged to the Ernable culture. However, some artifacts testified to the presence of people in this area as early as a Copper Age. In one of the excavations, at a depth of about one meter, scientists found a pile of fragments of a ceramic vessel and tiny cremated human remains. According to archaeologists, this is one of the oldest cremation burials in Syria, which is about 3,000 years old. They managed to extract the entire grave and transport it to the museum for study and restoration. Ground figurine with a falcon Archaeologists have discovered in Oslo a small figurine that depicts a man in a crown holding a falcon on his hand. This find dates back to around 1200. Perhaps it depicts a king or queen, for example the Norse king Hakon IV the Old. The oldest evidence of falconry goes back to the pre-literary era. For example, there are known Hittite stalles depicting this practice, which date back to about the 13th century BC. However, in Europe, falconry spread much later. Later, which was probably associated with the invasion of the continent by the Alans and Huns during the era of the Great Nations migration. But in the Middle Ages, it becomes one of the important components of the leisure of the privileged strata of society. So the bones of these birds can be found in the rich burials of Viking warriors, and their images are on the rune stones. Moreover, for the Scandinavians, the sale of falcons even represented an important source of income. Archaeologists from the Norwegian Research Institute for Cultural Heritage have excavated in Oslo on the site of a medieval area. Researchers have found a small horn figurine about 7.5 cm long, which depicts a man with a crown on his head, with a falcon sitting on his arm. A crown is depicted on the head, but it is difficult to determine who the figurine represents, a king or a queen. In those years, women also practiced falconry. This find was made on the territory of the park, next to which there was a royal palace until 1300, so scientists assumed that the figurine could belong to a noble person, including the king himself. The Mysterious Disappearance of an Advanced Civilization about 5,300 years ago, an ancient civilization arose in eastern China, building a magnificent city the likes of which may have never been seen before in all of Asia and possibly the entire world. The surviving traces of the Lianzhu culture, which emerged along the banks of the Yangtze River Delta in eastern China, are testament to what this unique Neolithic society was capable of at the turn of the Stone Age. The ruins of Lianzhu city, discovered by archaeologists, show numerous signs of the so social, cultural and technological advances of the period, especially in agriculture, including the construction of canals, dams and reservoirs. However, this real wonder of the world did not exist for a very long time. Having existed for about 1,000 years, Liangzhu culture mysteriously collapsed about 4,300 years ago, and the ancient city was suddenly abandoned. The most common version was a massive flood, which was indicated by a thin layer of clay found on the ruins of the city. Nevertheless, it was not possible to establish a clear connection between the death of such a developed civilization and the character of the Yangtze River. Therefore, of course, a huge number of various myths arose around this event. In the new study, 
an international team of scientists examined mineral formations such as stalemites from two underwater caves in the region that retain chemical signatures of ancient climates. Analysis of these samples showed that the destruction of Langju city coincided with a period of extremely heavy rainfall, which probably lasted more than 4,300 years ago. In the end, the incessant floods appear to have forced the people of Langju to abandon their capital and their homes in the Taihu Plain, ultimately leading to the collapse of civilization. For hundreds of years thereafter, other ancient cultures tried to replace Langju, but the water literally destroyed the possibility of the development of Neolithic communities in the region. Orichalcum – Metal from Atlantis Orichalcum is a mysterious metal described by ancient Greek authors as a lost alley of the Atlanteans. This alley has been compared to the golden curls of Aphrodite, and the strength of the orichalcum was enough to make a shield for Hercules. It is unknown whether this substance existed or not. Orichalcus is best described by Plato in his dialogue Crete, where he speaks of the city of Atlantis. On the island of Atlantis, this metal was mined in natural deposits. The Atlanteans mined all the metal they needed in the mines on their island. Orichalcum was considered the second most valuable metal after gold and was considered a mystical metal. Mystical metal came to be seen as a material created exclusively for special people chosen by the gods. Religious sects used the mystical halo of metal for their own purposes. For example, Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, claimed that common cards were made from orichalcum. In the literature, Plato's metal is usually considered a brass alloy, but the ancient Greeks knew about brass and used this alley. The ore was named zinc copper ore. This alley has a light golden hue and can be confused with gold. Brass is comparable its strengths to bronze and was used to make shields, armor, and weapon. Recently, another argument has emerged in favor of the theory that Orichalcum is called a brass alley. A ship from the 6th century BC was found on the seabed of the coast of Sicily in Italy. The find was made in 2014. In the place of the shipwreck, metal ingots were found in a red golden hue. Scientists suggested that the ingots were from an Orichalcum alley, a mythical material of the Atlanteans. Remains of weapon, fragments of amphorae, and containers for transporting crude oil, which was a valuable commodity at the time, were found on the ship. Presumably, it was a merchant ship, the crew of which had weapon and armor to protect against sea robbers. After analyzing the composition of the ingots, they identified copper and zinc as the main components of the brass alley. The hypothesis that Orichalcum is an alley of copper and gold arose from a transcription error in the ancient Greek name Plato for this metal. The word means mountain copper, and in the process of translation, it turned out that Orichalc, gold copper, means gold copper. Orichalc was considered a noble material, so the hypothesis of fusing it with gold might make sense, but adding gold to the alley makes the metal softer and heavier. It would be inappropriate for armor, weapon, or shields to be of such an alley. Nine Neanderthals near Rome Italian archaeologists have found the fossilized remains of nine Neanderthals in a cave near Rome. This helped to understand how the Italian peninsula was settled and what the environmental conditions were like in ancient times. An archaeological discovery has confirmed that the Guattari cave in San Felice Sercio is one of the most significant sites in the world for the study of Neanderthal life. The skull of a Neanderthal man was discovered in a cave back in 1939. The fossil bones discovered by archaeologists this time include skulls two teeth and other remains. The oldest of these dates from 100,000 to 90,000 years ago. Eight more Neanderthals are believed to date 50,000 and 68,000 years ago. Excavations began in 2019. They took place in a part of the cave that has not yet been explored and included a lake first noted by anthropologist Alberto Carlo Blank, who is credited with discovering the Neanderthal skull in 1939. The find of archaeologists has already been called an extra extraordinary discovery about which the whole world will talk. The large number of remains suggest that the Neanderthal population was significant. This, in turn, testifies to the existence of the first human society. The cave has perfectly preserved the environment that was here 50,000 years ago. The fossilized remains of animals found in the cave, an elephant, a rhinoceros, and a giant deer, give an idea of the flora and fauna of this region and its climate. Ancient city in central China 
In the village of Tajing in Henan province in central China, archaeologists have discovered an urban settlement dating back to the Shen dynasty. The area of the found city is 560 meters from east to west and 330 meters from north to south. To date, archaeologists have found 27 tombs and various artifacts in this area, including more than 70 items of bronze, weapon, tools, earthenware and jade dishes, as well as items made of bones. In addition, residential and industrial zones with tufts, wells and special pits were discovered on the territory of the city. To the east of the city, archaeologists also found an annular trench approximately 330 meters long from north to south and approximately 300 meters wide from east to west, indicating the defensive nature of the site. The clear functional zoning of the territory testifies to the high level of the city. According to scientists, this discovery is of great archaeological importance for the study of the culture of the Shen dynasty. Further archaeological research continues. The oldest baby burial in Europe Archaeologists rarely find the bones of ancient children, especially newborns, because they are small and fragile and therefore cannot remain intact for millennia like the bones of adults. And if scientists find ancient burials of children, it is usually impossible to determine their gender because the DNA in their bones is not preserved. However, the remains found in an Italian cave were an exception. They have lain for over 10,000 years but still contain a fair amount of DNA. Research has shown that they belong to a Homo sapiens girl who died at the age of 40 to 50 days. The find includes several bones of a child as well as a seashell bed that adorned the shroud in which it was wrapped. In addition, a nose claw was found nearby, which apparently was put as a gift. The study found this to be the earliest known burial of Homo sapiens female infants in Europe. The Erma Cave in northwestern Italy, where the remains of a baby were found, has presented scientists studying human evolution with many interesting finds. Excavations, which began in 2014, have shown that it was inhabited by both Neanderthals and early modern humans. Therefore, artifacts and traces of cave life were left in the transition period between the last Neanderthals and the first Homo sapiens. This is exactly the period about which science knows very little. The remains of a human child were discovered by accident in in 2017, when scientists were looking for traces of Neanderthals. However, the grave was completely excavated only in 2018. Near the remains, archaeologists have found more than 60 beads and pendants made from two types of shells. They all appear to have been sewn onto the fabric cover. This indicates that one of the ancient people visited the coast, breaking a path of 20 kilometers through forest hills. But it is quite possible that the ancient people traded in such ornaments. The girl, whose remains were found in the cave, was named Neva after the nearby river. Scientists were unable to determine from several of her bones what caused her death. Babies, females and obviously males were considered members of their community at birth. This is an important finding as the age at which babies began to be accepted as individuals remain in question. It was difficult to draw conclusions from the several ancient children's burial places that were discovered earlier. Earlier, it was believed that the richly decorated burials belonged to men because men had status and women did not. But recent archaeological finds refute this notion. The researchers hope that in the future they will be able to find even more female burials, including babies, which will provide answers to most of the existing questions. Arrow fragment in dinosaur skeleton no matter how much archaeologists and anthropologists would like to calm science and create a coherent theory about the origin of civilization from which not a single fact would fall out, this is impossible. Humanity is millions of years old, the finds shout, but academic science doesn't want to hear them. According to the accepted theory of evolution, Homo sapiens appeared 30,000 years ago, and the settlement of America took place no more than 12, 20,000 years ago. However, even before Darwin published his work on the origin of man, discoveries appeared that refuted this theory. It happened in the spring of 1863 in the town of Saint Priest in northwestern France. An employee of the French National Museum of Natural History, Jules de Noia, found animal fossils in a one and a half million year old rock that clearly showed parallel grooves and circular marks left by a knife. Moreover, the traces of processing were covered with minerals in the same way as the fossil itself which means that they were left before the remains were fossilized. French academics explain the origin of the marks by the action of glaciers or even by the traces of workers' shovels. Scientists were not convinced by the fact that later in the same deposits of St. Priest,
increased, the archaeologist Lewis Bourget found a number of land tools which were recognized by the anthropologist Armand de Quarterfage as scrapers, drills and pikes, but the discovery was brushed aside. In 1865, cut bones of a southern elephant and an Etruscan rhino were found on the banks of the Arno River in Italy. The elephant became extinct one and a half million years ago, and the rhinoceros at least eight million years ago. In 1968, in one of the mines of the town of Belle in France, a fragment of the jaw of the rhinoceros was found, on which four parallel grooves were clearly visible. Archaeologist Lacida presented this fragment to academicians and noticed that in ancient times they tried to cut the jaw. The rocks in which the fossil was found were 50 million years old. In 1872, the English geographer Edward Charles Ward found drilled shark teeth in the depth of red rock. The rocks in which the teeth are preserved were formed two and a half million years ago. At a meeting of the Royal Anthropological Institute, the scientist was ridiculed, saying that the holes in the teeth were made either by mollusks or parasites or caries. Charles Ward was supported only by a certain collier who examined the holes through a microscope and confirmed that their edges were machined and located exactly in the center, which excludes chance. It is noteworthy that at the beginning of the 20th century, stone tools were discovered there, which were more than 2 million years old. The Englishman Knockcut found a piece of petrified wood in Mendesley, which someone sawed off 400 or 500,000 years ago. The quality of the drink was clear that Homo sapiens did it. The next discovery happened in 1874 on the coast of the Dardanelles in Turkey. Here, archaeologists covered in the Miocene rocks found a fossil of a fossil elephant dinotherium, on which drawings of animals were carved. Here he also discovered flint instruments and bones split to extract the bone marrow. In 1970, Canada raised the first challenge to anthropologists' notions of settling America. In the glacial floodplain of the Old Crown River, formed 80,000 years ago, an employee of the Canadian Museum, Richard Marlin, found processed animal horns. His opponents argued that most of it was the fault of the glacier, but expert Pat Chipman of Johns Hopkins University studied the fossil fragments and proved that one of them contains traces of processing that remain on the bones when the carcass is flayed. Even more scientists were stirred up by the discovery of a California college employee, George Miller, who found six mammoth bones with knife scratches in the Anza Borrego desert near San Diego. Moreover, one of these scratches continued on two bones, that is, it was inflicted when, when cutting the carcass. Isotope analysis showed that the mammoth is 300,000 years old, and paleomagnetic dating gave 750,000 years. It smelled sensational, but Miller's opponents simply refused to examine the fossils and hinted to him that no scientific journal would allow his article. In 1979, in Tanzania, he Human bare footprints were found on the edge of a volcano that erupted three and a half million years ago. Anthropologist Mary Leakey studied them and concluded that the foot of the ancient Tanzanian is no different from the foot of the Cro Magnon, although, according to Darwin, only creatures lived at that time that had a foot like that of monkeys. To admit that millions of years ago people walked the earth again it was not enough courage. But the Argentines were able to really refute the ideas of scientists about the time of the settlement of America. First, the 19th century scientist Florentino Amageno found stone tools, cut bones, and ancient fireplaces on the beach of Monte Germoso. All this was preserved in the layer, the age of which was determined at three and a half million years. Amageno's contemporaries did not object to the fact that all these are traces of Homo sapiens, but did not agree with the dating. From the 2.8 million year old late Pliocene layer, Amagino drew another find, a toxodon femur with a fragment of a narrow hat or lens. It was not single, but connected to the lower leg and had a typical color. The fossil cavities were filled with loess. Even if the fossil had fallen into sedimentary rocks from the upper layer, it would still be ancient. The age of the rocks that lay above was estimated at 400,000, one and a half million years. When a fragment was removed from the bone, it turned out that it was part of the tip made of quartzite in the form of willow leaf of the most Syrian type which was common in Europe. All this suggests that people lived much earlier than official history tells us. We will never be able to prove it 100%, but you shouldn't believe the official story 100% either. But you can calmly become smarter and broaden your horizons on our channel. Subscribe and share this video with your friends, write kind comments and soon you will see new finds from our Archaeologists. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone.